Oh, hey, thanks for watching my video. I'm sure there's so many more cooler things you could be doing right now. <laughs> right. All right, throw me a freaking bone here, Scott. Subscribe. Click the button at the bottom. You see it? Click it. Click it. When a problem comes along, you must click it. Click it. Good. Do it. Or I'll send my mini-me after you. Yeah. He's not that big, but he's very dangerous. And you're going to find out in one, two, three. What's up, everybody? And welcome back to Adam and Tyler World. Thank you for joining me today. Don't forget to like this video, comment below, and subscribe. I do appreciate it greatly. So, this video is about the top ten things to me about Avengers Endgame. If you haven't seen it already, turn this video off. Huge spoiler alert. I'm going to talk about all the movie or my top ten favorite moments. So... I'm pretty sure if you want to see this without any spoilers, you're going to want to turn this off now. Okay, so all of you who have seen the movie and want to talk about it with me and discuss it down below, you are more than welcome to debate what I have to say down below. Um, yeah, that's about it. So let's get into it, shall we? So to start things off at number 10 on my top 10 moments of Avengers Endgame was the moment when Spider-Man had the Infinity Gauntlet. He was holding on to it. It's the one, of course, that uh, Iron Man made for the Hulk to snap his finger and bring everybody back to life. Well, he was holding on to it, and Captain Marvel comes down. She's got her new haircut. Looks a little boyish, although my hair, you could say, looks a little girlish, so who's to say? Um, she comes down. She's trying to get the gauntlet from him. And he's like, uh, hi, I'm Peter Parker. And he's all scared because he didn't know what to, what's going to happen next. She's like, hey, Peter Parker, you got something for me? And he's like, uh, and he's all beaten and battered, and he's like, Offers it to her, like, uh, here you go. He's like, well, I don't know how you can get through all those people. And just shows, like, a mob of bad guys. And uh, all of a sudden, one of the girls shows up. Don't worry, she's got backup. And you have your little girl power moment where you see all the girls, like, yeah, 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 yeah. And they're ready to fight, and they'll kick butt and do all that kind of stuff. I just thought it was funny because, um, of course, there's all mostly guys in the show, in the movie. And then Captain Marvel comes along, and she's a butt kicker. And all of a sudden, all these girls are like, oh, I, I kick butt too, which which is fine. Let's say they, they could kick my butt. But I, the major thing I thought was funny that they had every single female there, not one male, and they even had Mantis there. Granted, Mantis is a smoke show, but when it comes to fighting, not too good. Moment number nine also has to do with Spider-Man. Right when they came back, Spider-Man sees Iron Man and goes, hey, hey, uh, Tony or Iron Man, whatever it came or what he calls him, goes, Hey, I don't know what happened. You know, when I turned to dust, I must have passed out. And I came to, and uh, Doctor Strange is doing a little spinny thing. And he's just talking. Iron Man's just looking at him like, wow, he's he's back. He's alive. I helped, I helped bring him back to life. He just gives him a big hug, and Spider-Man just stops. And, oh, uh, oh, this is nice. So that was a heartfelt moment, and it was nice to see that because when he first, the beginning of the movie, he comes, he sees Captain America. He's like, I lost the kid. And he was very upset about that because he cares about it. And now he's back. Moment number eight was the very, very, very end of the movie. You got to see Captain America when he was old. He went back in time when he was young, and he went back in time. And then you see him in the in the, future, in the present, and he's old because he went back in time and stayed in the back of the back of the past. And uh, which is weird because I thought he couldn't age, but I guess not. And uh, the very last part, you see him dancing with Peggy. So that was that was a sweet moment because you know he loved Peggy and he kept showing him with a little thing in his like little pocket watch or whatever you want to call it, and had the picture over it. So. It's pretty much inevitable that he was going to end up with her at the end. And I kind of saw it coming because the whole time, when, like I said, when he was leaving and he saw Bucky and Falcon, and they're like saying, man, we're going to miss you, blah, blah, and whatever, blah, blah. Okay, he's going to be back in one, two, three, four, five seconds. So it's kind of a dead giveaway there. But still heartfelt nonetheless. I might have teared up. Moment number seven was when Thanos actually finally disappeared after Iron Man went snap. And everybody else disappeared, and then you finally see Thanos sit down, tired and exhausted and beat, and just knew, I'm going to lose. And you see him just go, fade away. Finally dead. It's been, he's been in Marvel movies for several years now. Let's see, he's been in Guardians of the Galaxy 1, uh, all kinds. Of course, Infinity War, definitely a huge part of that. He was in-game, then one bad guy, so he was finally dead. Thank goodness the good guys have won. Moment number six was a huge, huge moment. You see Thanos, he's beat up Captain America. His shield is beat to heck. He's just like, ah, and he does it. And he pulls the leather on it really tight, and he's got like half of his shield left. He's just ready to go on against Thanos and his hundreds and thousands possibly of bad guys. He's just like, I'm never going to give up. I'm going to keep going. You're going to have to kill me. And all of a sudden, you hear Falcon go, 
Uh, Captain, can you hear me? Can you hear me? And all of a sudden you see the from Doctor Strange and the good guys start showing up here and there and all over the place. And then you see all of them lined up and he finally got to say it. Captain America got to go, Avengers, assemble! And they, ah! and they charged forward at a huge fight scene. It was awesome. Moment number five was a callback basically to Infinity War where we saw Gamora die. And it was probably the saddest moment of Infinity War in my opinion because Guardians of the Galaxy are the best part of the Marvel, uh, Marvel Universe to me. I said I wasn't even a big fan of Marvel until Guardians of the Galaxy came on and they changed the whole landscape because before that, mostly the movies were serious. Like I said, Thor 1, Thor 2, Captain America, Captain America 2, 3, blah, blah. They're all serious movies. I love comedy. Guardians of the Galaxy was comedy. They changed it. So in this part, it was when Gamora finally met Quill again and you just that moment of like, oh my gosh. And he's just like, Gamora? And he walks forward to her. He's like, I thought I lost you. He went to touch her and she goes, oh God. And she kicks him or punches him in the crotch and then, oh, and he bends over and then she gets him a second time and he falls over, he goes, oh. He's like, you missed me the first time, but you got both of them the second time. And then uh, Gamora's like standing there and she looks at Nebula and it's like, really him? And Nebula's like, it was either him or a tree. And you see Quill look up like, really? So that was moment number five. Moment number four was the actual snap by Tony Stark, AKA Iron Man himself because it's been building up this whole time and we weren't sure exactly how they were gonna defeat Thanos, but they knew there was one shot and right before that, Thanos had all the Infinity Stones in the gauntlet and he was getting ready to put it on. I think he may even had it on. Captain Marvel was like trying to beat him up for it. And he pulled out the purple stone and boom, punched her, made her flying. And then Iron Man's like, what? And he looks over at Doctor Strange and Doctor Strange gives him this just like, one, meaning there was one in 14 million, billion, whatever it was, chances that they were gonna be able to beat Thanos, and this was the one. He's like, you know what you gotta do. So Iron Man runs over to Thanos, grabs the Infinity Gauntlet, and somehow magically <laughs> pulls the stones, but Thanos doesn't know it, and we don't know it either, because then you see Thanos, he's like, I am inevitable. Just like he said at the end when he got his head cut off, at the beginning, he goes, <laughs> Nothing. He's like, huh? He looks over and you see Iron Man. He's like this. You see all the stones going exactly where they need to be. The yellow one here, purple, blue, red, orange, green. There we go. Then the yellow. Boom, I got it. Um, you see him just like they're going to the right place. He's just like, he's just exhausted, just like full of energy, just like, I know what I got to do. He's like, I beat you. And he goes, and I am Iron Man. Boom, snap, boom. all the bad guys fade to dust. Thank goodness for Rocket, cause he's about to get destroyed by that big old giant flying centipede thingy. So the snap was awesome, but we also know it has its repercussions. Moment number three has to deal with those repercussions because Iron Man is just a regular dude. He's just a rich, crazy billionaire who's got tons of money, but when it comes to strength, he's not Superman, he's not the Hulk, he's not Thor, he's not Captain America or anything like that. He's just a regular dude like me and you. So when he snaps, it's of course gonna kill him because he's just a regular dude. Like I said, Thanos, he's a monster, a titan. It burnt his freaking arm off. Hulk did the same thing. Later on you see him in a cast when he's trying to send Captain America to the past. So when he does that, it's basically just a death wish. So when he does that, he Spider-Man runs up to him, which was sad. And he was talking to him like, we did it, we won, we won, we won. But the tearjerker award of the night for me was when Pepper ran up to him. I said, I'm going to try not to cry right now. I said, just thinking about it. I said, it's just so sad. I said, Pepper comes up to him and she's like, she like says like Friday or whatever the, the robot's name is, not uh, Jarvis or whatever anymore. And he's like, system malfunction or whatever it was. And she like looks at him and she's like, she's just like, like and she kissed him, I think. And she's like, Tony. We're gonna be okay. Meaning her and her daughter are gonna be okay because daddy is about to die. And she's like, it's okay, Tony. You can rest now. <gasps> Cue the waterworks. And then his light goes out and she starts crying. And then she gives him a kiss, I believe right there possibly. Gives him a kiss on the cheek and then she starts crying. And everybody's really upset, upset and sad because Iron Man just gave his life for everybody. And he did an excellent job, but like I said, 
Ooh boy, I said I saw it twice and both times I cried at that part. Moment number two for me was during the battle when it was Captain America, Iron Man, and Thor versus Thanos. It was just hand-to-hand -hand combat. They had some weapons and things like that. And you see uh, at one point it's Thor versus Thanos. And Thor goes to get Stormbreaker to come to him. And right when he does, Thanos intercepts it and starts shoving it into his chest. You see it cutting through his armor. He's just like, ah, ah. And he's going to cut right through his chest. Kind of like what Thor did to Thanos at the end of Infinity War when he threw the, the Stormbreaker and went, and stabbed him right in the chest. But he's pushing through. And all of a sudden, you see Mjolnir, the other hammer, rise up. And you think, oh, cool. Thor's going to get it come and come and help him. And all of a sudden, wham, it hits Thanos. Flies in the sky, comes back. <laughs> Captain America has Mjolnir. And then uh, it was like, yes! He finally did it! He's got Mjolnir and he's got the shield. Like, yes! Super excited about that part. And you see Thor go, I knew it! Because he's like, I knew he was good enough to get it. Because you had to be righteous to be able to hold Mjolnir. Mjolnir, I hope I'm saying that right. I love this thing, but I just don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. So he had to be righteous or whatever, good enough to hold it and whatever. Like he almost picked it up in Age of Ultron, but he wasn't able to. And of course, Thor was happy because he gets just got his life saved. He's about to be chopped in half like a piece of broccoli, but nope. Captain America comes to the save. He starts ding, 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 throwing it, throwing the shield, throwing the hammer, bing, 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 beating up Thanos. It was freaking awesome. And moment or part number one, my favorite part of Avengers Endgame had to be without a shadow of a doubt. Fat Thor. This guy stole the show. I said, he was boring as heck in the first two Thors, but then in Thor Ragnarok, him and Taika Waititi joined up together and like, we're gonna let you do whatever you want, be more like Chris Hemsworth and be hilarious and funny. And that's exactly what we did with Thor Ragnarok. Saved the franchise in my opinion. Then he was the same guy in Infinity War. He's the same guy in the Endgame, except now he's fat. It was so awesome. I said, you gotta give this guy credit, Chris Hemsworth. This guy is shredded to the max. And he comes in to be Thor, and he's Fat Thor. In the words of Rocket Raccoon, you look like melted ice cream. He was awesome. He was hilarious the whole time. He was trying to drink beer. He was scared. He couldn't talk to his mom. He's just like, oh, not for the future. He's like, oh, and he's just crying the whole time. He had that stare down basically at the end with him versus Star-Lord where they're like, oh, the Guardians of the Galaxy are back. And he starts moving Star-Lord's screen, and Star-Lord's like, this is my ship, you know, I'm the captain. And he goes, oh, no, of course, of course. And he's like, we don't, or we, and they, and they were like, oh, you guys should, Drax, I believe, was like, you guys should fight to see who could be the rightful leader. And then like, no, 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 no that's, that's not necessary. No, no, no. And then just the look on Thor's face when he's like, no, no, of course you're the leader. Of course, of course. And he's like, of course you are. And just like, it, it's adorable. Like I could <laughs> smash you with my thumb if I wanted to, but he's trying to be humble, trying to be a better guy. So that's awesome. Plus it means that if they have Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which I'm hoping they will, James Gunn's back. Sounds like they're going to do it, but it's only until like 2020, which stinks, is when they're going to start filming it. So it's 2021, which means two years till I get to see this bad boy. But I'm super excited it's going to happen, hopefully. Uh, that means Thor might be involved. Yes! I just told you, Guardians of the Galaxy is my favorite part of the Marvel Universe. Thor is my favorite part of anything, like, as far as not Guardians of the Galaxy that's in Marvel. You put them together, and magic! And like I said, and even the part when him and Captain America were going back and forth after Captain America had gotten Mjolnir, he had Stormbreaker one tor one part and Thor had Mjolnir and he goes, no, 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 you get the little, and he gives Captain America the Mjolnir and then uh, Thor gets his uh, Stormbreaker again. Just hilarious, just awesome. I said, everything about it, I said, Fat Thor stole the show of Avengers Endgame, if you ask me, without a shadow of a doubt. You might disagree, that's fine. But like I said, if it weren't for him, that movie would have been a five. Like I said, he stole the show. Bottom, bottom, like does, there's nothing you can say. It's why I got my hair long. Thor's awesome. Um, that is it. Thank you everybody for watching this video. Don't forget to like this video. Comment below. Tell me if you think I'm an idiot. Tell me if you think I'm right on on the 10 favorite things of Avengers Endgame. If you haven't seen it already and you're watching this, you might be a crazy person because I just spoiled everything for you. Well, not everything, but most things. That is it, everybody. Thank you. Uh, and that is it till next time. Peace.